Okay, so let's do a GarageBand tutorial. I've already got it open here. If you need to find it on your computer, you can click on this little magnifying glass and type in GarageBand. So as you start to type it in, it'll come up. You can hit return and it will open it for you. So now we're in GarageBand. We got a new project started here. This down here, these are uh, we want to click empty project and then down here, we want to choose our audio input. I'm using the built-in microphone on the laptop today is what I have this set to. Um, I, my output is to the HDMI cable that I have hooked up. Cool, but you might have uh, your, if you have a focus right audio interface like we had in class, this is where you would click on this and select your focus right. Okay, so we're going to choose that. It's going to start a new project for us. All right, it's going to ask us for our first track. What kind of track do we want to create? We're going to record. So we want this record using a microphone or line input. Here we can choose which input on our interface we're using. Cool, again, I'm using just line one, the built-in microphone, normal speakers for the output. Okay, cool. So we can see when I talk, we're getting levels already right here. So this is our interface, this is our layout in GarageBand. Let's go over a couple things up here. We can, first thing we wanna do is click this and change it to time. So that changes our timeline to seconds instead of beats per minute. We can click those purple buttons. We can turn off our metronome and stuff. If you're wondering what any of this stuff is, Come over here to this question mark, click that, and this brings up this cool box down here where now when we hover over stuff, that box changes and it tells us what these different buttons will do. Cool? So that can be very helpful if you're new to GarageBand. Um, the library over here is gonna change the voice of what our track sounds like. So if like we had a guitar plugged in and we might choose acoustic guitar or electric guitar, we could add distortion through our computer. Or for our voice, we could choose some of these different vocals. We could maybe click on a uh, telephone vocal and it would make it sound all crappy like we're on a phone if we wanted to add that effect. So this is how we change the voice of our track. If we want to hide this, we can click on that little uh, menu button right here, show hide library. We can double click on the track name and we can change it to whatever we want to help keep track of what our different tracks are. That's very helpful, cool. Um, we can use this slider to zoom in or out on the timeline. That can also be very helpful if we Control, hold, con control, and click. We can go to track header components, show record enable, and that's gonna bring up this button. So now we can click that, and that's gonna let us choose which track we're recording to. It'll only record to the tracks that we've turned it on and that little red light is blinking. Um, before we do a little recording, I wanna show you the smart control. So if we click this button, these are the effects going on uh, applied to this track right now. If we click master, it's gonna show us the effects to the master track, all right, turn that off. If we click this little I button, it's gonna show us more information. So this is for our this, this track that we're on, right? It's not the master. We can change the record input, which, which uh, input we're using. We can change the levels here. If we scroll down, our plugins, our effects in GarageBand, the effects are called plugins. So we can see that we can turn on the compressor by clicking that little power button and also this light comes on so we can turn effects on and off over here as well. If we click in the middle of an effect, it'll bring up this menu where we can change the parameters of the effect. We can dial them in or we can use different presets from this drop down here. Cool. And if we have for our master track, same thing, we have five effects that we can do for our master track. We can turn them on by clicking that on button or by flipping the switch. If we click in the middle, it'll show us the uh, settings. We can mess with the settings or add in a preset. Cool, so let me turn all these back off. Okay, our compare button is a sort of before and after. You can listen to what it sounds like, I believe, before and after the effect there. Okay, so let's record onto our track. I'm gonna hide this for now. We don't need that, everything's like we want it. So I'm gonna hit record. I'm gonna give it a couple seconds of silence and then I'm gonna do my intro uh, for my podcast, okay? Welcome to the first episode of my podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Hope you enjoy. <coughs> okay, cool. So that's my podcast intro right there. Just recorded it. Let's say I want to edit it. I can click on these little scissors. That brings up the editing window down here. So from here, I can click and select things. And I can click delete I can that I want to remove. This was my little cough at the end there. So I could click on the end and drag also and trim it down that way if I wanted same thing on this end let me move the oh 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 now I'm selecting this yellow highlighting is gonna click uh, what you want to loop 
Let me drag the playhead down so I can see the beginning here. And there we go. Now I can drag the end up and now it's all trimmed up. See how it trimmed it up here? So now I have just my intro, but I kind of coughed at the end, if you remember. Hope you enjoy. Cool, so that's what I cut out right there. There's my cough. We see that this is not actually being deleted. I can stretch it out. There's my cough again. So let's say for some reason I wanted to keep my cough and I wanted to move it up here. I could take the playhead, put it right there at the end. If I press Command T on the keyboard, now it's going to cut it up. Now these are two pieces. Again, if I move my playhead right there, Command T, now it's three pieces. So it's making cuts in into the uh, sound file. I can hit Delete, and it's going to delete it. But now there's this gap here, so I'd have to grab this and drag it over right, to fill up that gap. Um, let me undo that. So edit undo. Remember, if we do something we don't want to do, we can edit undo multiple times even. Um, let's say I wanted to delete this and automatically have that shift over. I would select the part I want to delete, go up to edit and go to delete and move. And now you see how it automatically jumps over. That's going to save you a lot of time if you have a bunch of stuff to the right of what you're deleting. You don't want to have to delete, select everything, drag it over. We can just click delete and move. And I think that's going to, that's going to help you out. Cool, I also don't want that. I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. So there's my intro right there. God, that bird is going crazy outside. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's add some background music to finish this little intro piece here, okay? If we wanted to make this sound better, we could add effects to it. We could still add a compressor, a limiter. Um, you might have to download noise reduction. Again, that's the cool thing about plugins is you can just go download from the internet free ones or pre-made ones that cost money. Uh, I'm going to want to add some music here, so I'm going to go over here and I can click on either the media browser, that's this first one, and I can pick a track from my com computer, click it, drag it onto here. But I'm actually going to use a loop because that's one of the cool things about GarageBand. It has all of these free samples, these loops that you can kind of just repeat over and over and over for as long as you need them. They're uh, separated by different types of instrument or different feel. So let's say I wanted to use this 44th Street Long. You've probably heard a lot of these sounds in YouTube or different um different things online or commercials because it's free so here's the music so i want it to play for a few seconds and then i want my voiceover to start and then i want the music to keep playing but while i'm talking i don't want the music to be too loud right i want to be able to hear myself so first i'm going to take myself i'm going to turn myself up a little bit because i'm pretty quiet there cool turn myself up now and what I want to do is turn the volume again down while I'm talking and back up when I'm not talking. So what I can do is I can click this button right here. This is show hide automation. I click that and now it's already set to volume. We can change what automation we want to, we want to set here. I'm going to leave it at volume. When I click, see I get this yellow bar. I can move the bar up and down and we see how my volume knob also moves up and down. So I can change the volume this way for the whole track. But what I want to do, again, is have it kind of fade out while I'm talking and then fade back in. So I'm going to click along this line and make these little dots. And these are basically basically keyframes. We kind of talked about these in class. Uh, these are points at which you want something to happen a certain setting. I want the volume at this point to be this. So now that I've set those, I can drag. And this is where I want the volume to be quiet while I'm talking. And we see this is sort of a graphical representation of what the volume is doing. It's normal. Then it's turning down, it's staying down, and then it's turning back up all while, right around while I'm talking. And maybe I don't want the turn, the volume down to be so dramatic, so I'm going to kind of stretch this out a little bit. Cool. Same thing with the fade back up. And then after I, have, after the music's come up, I don't want it to just play the rest of the track. I want it to fade out as well. So let me do this. Have it play for a few seconds here, and then fade out. And then right here is where I want to cut it. So I can move the playhead. I've got this selected, control T. Oh, see, I'm on volume. I think I need to close that and be on the file. And now when I, yeah, there we go. Now I've got it selected, control T. All right, now I can delete that. So let's turn the automation back on. And let's, uh, let's listen to this. Let's see if it does what I said. It should turn down while I'm talking and turn back up when I'm done. Cool, so we can see the automation worked. I'm still too quiet, I need to turn that up, cool. So let's say that's my final file. I wanna save, 
So I file, save to save my project. And then when I want to export the MP3 or whatever file type I want, I go to share, export song to disk. And now I can name the file here, podcast, cool. I can save it uh, as a different file type. So I usually save it as an MP3 for the web. Remember, we can change our quality down to 128. It says medium quality, but for spoken word, voice, that's going to be just fine for your podcast. It's going to give you a smaller file if you're worried about that. You click export, and that's it. It'll save your MP3 for you. Cool? So that's GarageBand in a nutshell. This is a basic overview, how you edit, how you set these automations. We can come, uh, we can look at our different effects here either for the master track that affects all of the tracks or just for individual tracks here cool that's it uh, if you have questions there's lots of tutorials online and of course you can always email me uh, or Facebook me ask me questions okay so good luck you guys